Hello, welcome to Animal Watch, and this week we're meeting the Central Asian Shepherds. Wow. This week I will be meeting one of the most powerful and driven guard dogs on planet Earth, another nemesis of the wolf, a defender of livestock and a fierce protector of property and families. Meet the Central Asian Shepherd. The Central Asian Shepherd, sometimes known as the Alibi, is a formidable flock guardian and guard dog, selected over centuries for its power and stamina. Central Asian Shepherds sometimes are called Volkodav, the wolf crusher in Russian. They are a 4,000 year old ancient dog breed originating from natural selection in the Iranian plateau region. Some serve as livestock guardians against predators such as wolves and bears. Some protect their property and families inside. And some are used for dog fighting in many countries of that region. This breed bears a strong genetic similarity to other Aboriginal breeds such as the Georgian Shepherd, the Kangal Dog and Akbash. Central Asian Shepherds tend to form a natural social group, consisting of different members bearing different duties, not unlike a wolf pack or wild dog pack. Thus, puppies with different working qualities are normally born in the same litter. Selective breeding has focused in on three lines in particular, resulting from these natural-born characteristics. Those dogs who show natural abilities for herding, those who show heightened aggression for fighting, and those with courage and mistrust of strangers outside of the family suited to become guard dogs. It's been suggested that in modern times, larger breeds of dog have been added to the once pure bloodlines to enhance its size, resulting in some Central Asian shepherds looking extremely large in photos online. What is clear is that the guard dog version of this breed is not to be messed with. The true age-old working lines harbour power, ferocity and an absolute want to guard. This means that anyone making the mistake in entering in on someone's property where one is loose could be making an error they will never forget. Today I am meeting Nino Lorasso, the gentleman who originally introduced the Cane Corso to the UK. He has developed a particular line of Central Asian Shepherd guard dogs and unlike a normal episode of Animal Watch, today I will not be touching the dogs like I usually do. Why you ask? All will be revealed. Hello, hi, how are you doing Nina? Very good, thank you, pleased to meet you. And I'm here today to meet your amazing Central Asian Shepherds. I'm so excited, not met any before. What are we gonna have? What's gonna happen? Um, unfortunately, it's not your, your your normal filming. It's not something that I can bring out and introduce to you. Slightly different angle. Uh, it's how we keep our dogs. But yeah, let me walk you through and introduce you to our dogs. Okay. But you'll be seeing them behind the kennel because unfortunately they're not very friendly with anybody other than their family. So these two dogs is a mother and son. They're normally outside this whole area here doing their job. When I have friends and, and, and people that the dogs don't know, they're put away into their kettling area. It was evident that these guard dogs were doing their job extremely well by making it clear to me that I was not to enter the property. These working guard dog lines looked actually quite sweet and smaller in appearance than I had imagined, but their character and ferocity said otherwise. This is something that um, the dogs haven't been trained to do. Yeah, this is this something is just that naturally in their blood. They were never really selected for their look. They were more selected for a purpose. Though they might look cuddly and friendly, they soon let you know, don't oh, come near yeah, us. Oh yeah, they sure do, don't they? Yeah, I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> this is Zagor. 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 <laughs> yeah. I love the name. <laughs> wow. It's the females that generally alarm. Once the threat is there, the females 
tend to back off and the males come forward. Okay. The female's hanging back over there. He won't allow her to come forward. It was important to remember to retreat after each dog had showed its guarding tendencies, as this was good positive reinforcement that they had done their job effectively. Nino went inside the enclosure at one point to demonstrate how affectionate and loyal his dogs were to him and his family. These dogs are bred to be gentle and kind to those they protect, even though they instinctively mistrust every other stranger which approaches the property. After we had met the dogs, it was important to find out everything about the guard dog line of the Central Asian Shepherd. So we stepped inside to chat about this particular line that Nino had developed. As you can see, we don't have a dog sitting between us today, do we, Nino? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, the reason why we can't have one here today is because they're not dogs that I can introduce yes. to people. The Central Asian Shepherd is a dog that I fell in love with after studying many breeds over the years. I went in search for breeds that I felt think for themselves. I was amazed on how many different types of Central Asian Shepherds there were. You have what I think is a show dog, which I think has the Russian influence and they are much bigger dogs uh, reaching you know your 30 inches your 100 kilograms plus. So these are the ones that you see online that look really yeah. massive. Yeah. I felt that they didn't really have that instinct that I was looking for which was a guardian. I came across a breeder in Italy when I went to see him all of his dogs guarded and, and I wasn't able to go up and stroke any of them. After so much research I came across this lineage of Central Asian Shepherd, um, which has been selected to guard against man. All livestock guardians will guard against predators, but very few of them will guard against man. They'll warn against man. So Nino, tell us why in particular you wanted to have that temperament. I believe that there's two types of guard dogs, that you have a personal protection dog, which people classify as a guard dog, and you have a natural guardian, a dog that naturally guards. It's not a dog in my opinion that you can train in my opinion the central asian shepherd my lineage is a dog that you manage you can't get them to heal and i think it goes against what they've been bred to do they've been bred to think for themselves so when the shepherd is not with them he has to think when your family approach the dogs what, yeah. what is the sort of energy and what oh, happens happiness tails swirling and submissiveness and they just want to be with you do they see you as part of without sounding sort of demeaning the flock that they're protecting because it's a natural instinct isn't it to yeah. to care for yeah. the flock i think the family is the flock they'll probably see me and my wife as the alpha that they need to protect in the wolf world wolves will protect the alpha mm -hmm. the alpha is the one that tends to be in the background Yes. self-preservation because he's yeah. the brains. If you want to get them to do something, how do you encourage them to do it? Hey, for example, if somebody comes to our gate and the dogs are there doing a job, you know, they're saying stay out, I will ask the person at the gate to back off so the threat is no longer as much as it was and I will then call them and I generally have some bread in my pocket and so <laughs> I will call them, they'll know they're going to get a little treat, I put them into a kennel where they're secure mm -hmm. and then I go and deal with whoever it is that's at the gate. The stranger at the gate, he comes in and obviously he's been made to feel accepted by you. Yeah. Um, can he go near the dogs? No. Okay, so what will the dogs do to him? They'll probably bite him. They'll probably bite him. Yeah. So yeah. he can't be with them for a certain period of time. No and they will accept. No, and I also think that's quite confusing for dogs. There's this fantasy world where you want your dog to guard one minute and the next minute you want your dog to be petted by people. If you look at a wolf pack, a wolf pack won't allow a strange wolf to come into their pack, mm -hmm. especially with its young ones. So for me, it's crystal clear. The dog's there to look after our family. We are its pack and that's it. I'll give you an example. My brother lives five minutes from me. Yeah. He doesn't visit me every day, he might visit once a week, might visit once a month. How can I explain to the dog, this is my brother, so you have to be nice to him? Yeah. yeah I, I, don't, I don't know that you can do that. Your philosophy is generally no, no interference, no training, 
allow them to be natural guardians, which yeah. is which is the job they were trained to do. And because of their genetics and because of their history and bloodline, it's very, very natural yeah. for them to do that. So let's go into the history of this dog. What sort of countries did yeah. they originate? Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, yeah. um, Tajikistan, Caucasian Mountains. So all around that area. And but they would have probably evolved from the dogs that would have been naturally yeah. roaming in the area yeah. and they would have had a common type, a common look. Uh, I don't know about common look. I think it was the strongest would survive. So it yeah. wasn't actually a breed that was recognised like we now recognise breeds like German Shepherds, mm -hmm. Rottweiler. It's a breed that Shepherds have always used to protect their livestock. And the Shepherds would just choose the ones that could do a job. And it wasn't really a matter of colour or size or coat type. It was which dogs could do a job. I think the Central Asian Shepherd at some point has been made a breed, but they are all so different. Yes. You know, there isn't really a standard, you know, mm. tall ones, smaller ones, long coated, short coated. Roughly what are the weights that your males are versus your females yeah, generally? The females 35 up to 50, the males from 45 up to 60. They're normally quite tall. Males will reach 28, 29 inches to the shoulder. Females, 26, 28. I think it's important if you're looking at a working dog, you really shouldn't go too far away from the wolf. The type of dog that we have and we select generally resemble a wolf in weight, in stature, in height. In their natural habitat, shepherds that have these dogs couldn't have a 100 kilogram dog to walk for miles and miles and miles. They just wouldn't have the stamina. For me, it yeah. was a breed that is suited for the climate in this country. I look out my back garden and I watch them and it doesn't matter what the weather is, whether yeah. it's raining, whether it's snowing, whether it's ice, they are constantly patrolling. They're they all tough, have- Tough cookies, yeah, They right? wanna be outside. These dogs are powerful, they mean business, they're independent. Yeah. And we don't want these dogs being put to sleep because the wrong person decides they're gonna give it a go and their training is gonna work and they're gonna override this natural instinct. Yeah. Who should have a dog like this? and who should absolutely avoid this? I think it goes down to the person selling the dog or the breeder. I think it's important that a breeder, before they decide to sell a dog to somebody, is to study the person that they're selling it to. For me, I need to know who you are and I need to come and visit where the dog will be kept. And then I think it's important that you take advice. Many people will think that you can train these dogs. Mm -hmm. and. If you want to train a dog, then choose a different breed. You know, choose a German Shepherd, choose a Rottweiler, choose dogs which mm. like to be trained. Do you find that they bark a lot of the time during the day, even when there's no one around? Until they reach about 18 months old, they, they can be very vocal. Once they know their environment, they will bark when there's a reason. Our lineage isn't suited to all environments. They're not really suited to urban. They're more suited to large areas, large gardens, farms, small holdings. I think it's also important to understand that if you're gonna have this type of dog, you're not just protecting yourself, but you're protecting people from the other side of the boundary. Mm. So it's important when I go and visit people that the boundary is secure, that the dog can't get out. High fencing is important, but it's also important what goes underground, because yeah, they, they like to dig. to dig. One of the things which is quite interesting about our lineage is that they are very demonstrative. They don't want to fight. They really don't want you to come in. They're just basically saying, yeah, stay they're out. Giving, they're giving you all the warnings. Stay signals. out. Yeah. Know, the signal is don't come in yeah. here. I believe if you actually came into our territory that the dog would actually, yes, bite you, but not want to kill you. He's trying to get you to go. Strangely enough, when you take these dogs out of their environment, they're not as aggressive. People say, well, how do I take a dog like this to a vet? Well, I always have them muzzled just in case. And I always go as a last appointment. Yes. So I'm not so amongst no other, other people and other dogs. In the yeah. Room. My conclusion to this breed is that there isn't just one line, but three, and possibly four if you include the new extremely large show lines that have appeared. The ancient old livestock line, the fighting line, and the guard dog line. Nino's dogs were very particular to the purpose they served as guard dogs, and it's important to stress that these are not pets in any way or form. They come from one of the most ancient of working lines on Earth and should be understood for the purposes they were originally developed for. Obviously, here on Animal Watch, we absolutely do not agree with dogfighting, but needed to show our viewers the truth to one of the origins of this breed.
Also, I wasn't going to leave without asking the question that I'm sure you have all been waiting for. Nino, the ultimate question about the um, Central Asian Shepherd. Do you believe that these dogs can actually kill a wolf? If they're in a group, more than one, and you have an injured wolf or an elderly wolf, yes, possibly. It's a deterrent to keep the wolves away, to keep them at bay. But like for like, a three-year-old mature wolf and a three-year-old Central Asian, no, I don't think it's a standard chance. I don't, I don't actually think there is any dog in the world that can, that can win against a wolf, like for like. I know this will probably upset a lot of people because everybody likes to believe that their dog could. And yes, they could, if there's a group of them. But one to one, I don't believe so. And it's my opinion. This has been really, really interesting talking to you today. Thank and you. I've discovered a lot about a breed I never met before never had any contact with um, you guys have sent me messages saying can you please cover this breed because of course you love the kangaroo and you love the caucasian shepherd so here we have today we've got the central asian shepherd and um, i hope you've learned something today and if you've enjoyed this episode of animal watch then please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner i will put all nino's website details underneath so you can click through and find his website and be sure to tune in every single week where i'll be bringing you some more amazing episodes on dogs wolves animal rescue and conservation bye for now <laughs>